everyone, and welcome to part two of P7 Revision with someone who totally doesn't know what he's talking about, but is trying his best. Hopefully, um, winning, but, um, I don't know. But anyway, let's carry on. Now, today is going to be more or less, it's going to be basically about the scale of the universe and how we can measure things. Now, this is, first we have to talk about something called parallax. The, the parallax is basically a method of working out distances from stars to stars from Earth. Basically, you take it it's from two different angles. It's like if you hold your finger up to your eye, looked at it through your right eye, then covered up your right eye and looked at it through your left eye, it would appear to have moved. It's more or less the same thing. Now, this is a bit of P1, but it gets a bit harder here. Let's say this is your star, right? This is your sun, because we're also using the sun here as well. And this is my Earth. God, my hand is sticky. It's sticking to me. Right. Here's the Earth here. Let's say this is Earth in January, right? For the Earth to be on the other side, so let's say this is the right eye, for it to be on the left eye, it would need to have moved 180 degrees, which is basically it moves that in six months, if you should know. So if that's January, this is July here. Now we know the distance between the core of the Earth to the core of the Sun. And if we measure this, that's going to be a straight line, by the way. And then likewise here. We measure this. Right? So, what does it say here? Right, so that's the angle at which the star appears to be. I'm not very good at this, I'll be honest with you. Now if we cut this in half here and measure this, that's what's known as the parallax angle. Now this is a very hard definition to remember and it, I never know how to put it, but reading here the parallax angle is half the angle moved against distant background stars over six months. Right? Fix that in your mind. I'm going to say it again. The parallax angle is half the angle moved against distant background stars over six months. Right? So which is that. The further away the star is to you, the smaller the parallax angle. The nearer it is to you, the larger the parallax angle. Now that angle is measured in arc seconds. Wait, an arc second, not an arc second. No, that would be just weird. That has a sign like that. So one arc second would look like that, and that equals one over three thousand six hundred, which makes sense because if a complete circle is three hundred and sixty degrees, think of it as a clock, right? One minute is going to be one. 60th, right? Now there are 60 seconds in that minute. So 60 times 60 equals 3,600. So one second is going to be one 3,600 of that clock, right? Same thing here in a circle. Now the observed brightness depends on the distance of the star. Because how do you know, if a star is really bright, we can assume that it's quite close to Earth. Right? But, is it a really, really bright star further away? Right? You could have two stars with the same apparent brightness, but one can still be brighter than the other, because one could be further away. And if it's further away, less light reaches you, because the light spreads out through space. Now, cepheid variables are really useful. They basically pulse in brightness. 
and the longer the pulse period, the brighter the the bigger the intrinsic brightness of the star. The intrinsic brightness of the star is basically how bright the star would be if you got real up close to it. So basically, it means the real brightness of the star. So using Cepheid variables, we can make an average on how far away the star is. Now I want to speed up here. Now the scale of the universe. I haven't got my thing right. Two people, right? Shapley and Curtis. Now they're basically discussing, two very nice chaps, never actually met them, about the size of the universe. And they're trying to work out what these mysterious cloud looking nebulae are in the universe. Now, Shapley thought, very nice man, thought we're just made up of one galaxy. One whole galaxy. The universe is made up of one whole galaxy, but we're not in the centre of that galaxy. And he thought the nebulae were clouds of dust in the galaxy. Ooh, not very good at writing here. Now, Curtis thought we were part of many galaxies. The universe is made of many galaxies. He thought we were in the centre of our galaxy. And he thought nebulae were dis other distant galaxies. So who won? If we look at these two points, Curtis was right about that there were many galaxies in the atmosphere, in, in the universe, one point to him. However, Shapley was right that we are not in the centre of our galaxy, one point to him. Oh my god, this is too exciting. Who's won here? I'm afraid Curtis has won, because this mysterious nebulae were other distant galaxies. Now this was going on in the 1920s, but the whole thing wasn't solved until the 1930s, and that's when Mr. Hubble came in. Now he actually used Cepheid variables and their pulse periods to work out how far away stars actually were. And he also found out that distant galaxies appear to be moving away from each other. And he came to a conclusion that the more distant the galaxy is, the faster it's moving away from us. And that leads to our last formula in the whole section, actually. Speed of recession of a galaxy equals Hubble constant times distance. Now there's loads of debates on what the true, well, Hubble constant is often taken as 2 times 10 to the minus 18, so it's in standard form. But it's still being researched, there are many different ways to calculate it, so we still don't know. Anyway, I think that's more or less it. Um, well, let me just check my book here. He found that the nebulae were 2.5 million years away, so basically he used Cepheid variables and he realised that these mysterious nebulae were too far away to be in our galaxy. Oh, one thing I didn't mention was parsecs. So if you look at the angle, we can work out the distance of that star in parsecs. And about that basically is, this is in the paper by the way, 1 over the angle in arcsecs, which I'm just going to do that. Right, so that's the distance. That's probably that. Right, that line there. Okay, that's about it. Thank you very much.